Following the videos of the large signal and small signal BJT analysis, we can start to look at some amplifiers using transistors. Now in the last video, we finished that video by looking at a pretty complex circuit. So again, we had a DC source, an AC source, we had our NPN transistor, we had some capacitors, some resistors, and then some output voltage. And we wanted to determine what that output voltage was equal to. And to figure out what that output voltage is, we needed to do both DC and AC analysis. And we said that we needed to do the DC analysis first. Now the reason for that was because we need to find this value of R pi, which is equal to that thermal voltage divided by the DC base current. So we can start off by doing the DC analysis. And in the DC analysis, we're gonna set that AC source equal to zero. And if we assume some infinite insulation resistance, then we're gonna say that those capacitors act as open circuits. And of course, that's going to be at steady state, which is also going to be an assumption. So if we do that, we open up those caps and we can see that we have RS dangling now and RL dangling. So we can kind of just ignore those and our original circuit turns into something like this. Now this circuit looks quite familiar. And if we combined RE1 and RE2, so both of those emitter resistors, well, if you refer back to a previous video, we know how to deal with the circuit and it's the four resistor bias circuit. So what we did is we take a circuit like this and we use this kind of pseudo source transform to arrive at a circuit like this. And this is pretty easy to analyze. If this is a little bit confusing, see the previous videos and it should make fairly good sense. Now what we're going to do from this is we're going to set up a KVL around this base loop here. And that's going to allow us to arrive at this term here, which is quite messy. But nobody ever said electronics were pretty, so we just have to deal with this. Now from this, if we know all of our values, we can actually find what that DC base current is. Now for the millionth time in this course, VT is your thermal voltage, which is 26 millivolts. Of course, that's at 300 degrees Kelvin. So now that we've found what our pi is, we can set up for AC analysis. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the DC sources equal to zero. So what we get is a short right here. Now, if we have this short right here, well, often you'll see in textbooks is that we get this blanket statement where we short the caps in the AC analysis. And the reasoning is, well, if each one of those capacitors is quite large, we can assume it's a short circuit. Now, why is this? Well, recall if we look at the impedance per se for the capacitor, we get this one over J omega C term. And if C is large or the capacitance and our frequency is quite large, well, this impedance is approximately equal to zero. And that's where we get that assumption where we get that short circuit. So if we do that, we short C1, we short C2, and then we short CE. Now from that, we get this circuit here. Now notice that RE2 is in parallel with the short circuit, so we can disregard RE2. And recall that we can represent this NPN as this new small signal model that we've developed the understanding for. So what we can do is now simplify the circuit pretty greatly. And in the circuit, again, we're gonna have our base, collector, and emitter. We're still gonna have our defined input voltage, and we still have our output voltage. Now, if we say RB is equal to the parallel combination of R1 and R2 from above, and now we define RL prime, which is the parallel combination of the load resistor and RC. Well, that allows us to start to analyze the circuit pretty easily. So notice here, if we're trying to find our output voltage V out, well, this current beta IB, that's going to be equal to the same current that goes through RL prime. Now, because of the polarity here, what we can say is that the output voltage is equal to minus beta times IB times RL prime. And if we look at the voltage or the input, we know that that's going to be equal to the voltage over R pi plus the voltage over R E one. Now we know that the voltage over R pi is going to be equal to I B times R pi. But if we do a KCL right here, we can say that the current going through R E one is going to be the sum of I B plus beta times I B. So if we look at the input voltage, we get that it's equal to I B times R pi plus beta plus one times I B times R E one. Now, the reason that we're going to do this is because we are going to define some gain as we did in the early videos in this course. So if we define some voltage gain as the output voltage divided by the input voltage or A sub V, what we get is that 
the voltage gain is equal to this term here. And that's just taken from what we found above for the input and output voltages. Now, if the emitter resistor, call it RE1, if that's much, much greater than R pi, and our gain is much, much greater than one, well, we can say that the voltage gain is approximately equal to minus RL prime divided by RE1. And just take note of the minus sign here so we have this inverting effect going on. And recall that we also looked at something called the open loop gain. Now, the open loop gain, that was when we had no load, and RL prime is simply equal to RC. From that, our open loop gain looks a little bit like our closed loop gain, except notice the RL prime switched to RC. Now we can define an input impedance of the transistor, call it ZI sub T, and that's going to be equal to VN divided by the base current. So if we scroll up above, well, we can see from this equation for VN, we did have the base current in each term, so we can divide by that so that the input impedance of the transistor is simply equal to R pi plus beta plus one times RE one. Now we can also define the input impedance to the entire system, so ZN. So if we scroll up above here, we had Z in for the transistor, ZIT. Now we're going to look at the input VN. So we have to take into account this RB resistor right here. So if we do that, we can define ZN as VN divided by IN, which is going to be VN divided by two terms. We have VN divided by RB. That's simply this current right here. And then we're gonna have our other current, which is equal to VN divided by ZIT which we just found. And we can get rid of the VN term to arrive at this term here. And finally, we can look at the output impedance. So to do that, what we do is remove that load resistor and we look back into those terminals. So we can look at it from this way as we set the source voltage equal to zero. So if we do that, notice that this current right here is equal to beta times IB, but we don't really have anything that could produce a current right here. So IB is equal to zero which means this dependent current source acts like an open circuit. So if we have an open circuit right here and we look in through the output terminals, we really only see RC. So what we can say is that the output impedance is equal to RC. Now there's a few more amplifiers we can look at with NPN transistors, and we're gonna look at those in the next few videos before moving on to another component. But this is a really important video because in the first few videos of this course, we kind of had this black box for amplifiers. We didn't really know what they are. And now we're actually seeing some of the internals for how you can generate all kinds of different amplifiers. But of course, in this video, we just saw one. We'll see a few more later on. Thank you for watching. If you learned anything new, please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It helps out the algorithm.